Miller against Houston, a top 25 team last week in Lubbock. Houston, by the way, trailing Kansas as we speak. NC State won the toss, elected to defer, so Texas Tech will receive Colin Smith to kick it off. And back deep for Texas Tech is Drew Hoka. Red Raiders bring it out across the 20. That's Xavier White. And he's to the 25-yard line. That's where the Red Raiders will begin on offense. And we will see Donovan Smith, 6'5", 230 pounds, built like an absolute tank. Just his sixth career game that he is starting, second on the road, and coming off the biggest win of his young career. Anish, he reminds me of a young, raw Vince Young. Wow. He's 6'5", wow. 230 pounds layup, almost identical throwing motions. It's key for him tonight, though, to eliminate the turnovers and get quick, constant completions to stay ahead of the sticks. Miles Price goes in motion, edge pressure. Smith in the pocket, takes a hit, lets it fly, and it's caught down the seam. Lowick Fungi into Wolfpack territory, round one to Donovan Smith. And that's that double-edged sword the defense coordinator Tony Gibson lives by. He's going to bring pressure. He's going to bring constant pressure. But with that, if that front and linebackers cannot get to Donovan Smith, you're going to see big plays down the field. Now they're bringing the chains back. The officials were drowned out. Now they're bringing the chains back all the way to the original line of scrimmage. Oh, he said he dropped it. Texas Tech was ready to snap the ball at the NC State 40. Fungi dropped it. So second and 10. All that for naught, almost. And off Taj Brooks. No running lane. He's thrown back by Savion Jackson, and it brings up a third and long. I can promise you this is not where Texas Tech is going to want to live tonight, not in third and long. They know they are going to have to get positive yards on first and second down to be in manageable situations. This crowd is loud. They are lively. And Texas Tech wants to make the job for Donovan Smith as easy as possible, and they would love to be in third and short where they can have run pass options. Five wide here for Donovan Smith. Four-man pressure. Smith throws near side, nearly intercepted. It's broken up, intended for Xavier White. Cyrus Fagan, the safety, knocked it away. And wild pendulum swings on what's a three-and-out series. It looked like the Red Raiders hit a big play. It ends up being a drop. They come back, and it's a three-and-out. This is the exact start that the Wolfpack were hoping for. They want to keep their crowd involved in this game. And there's no better way when you're at home on Saturday night than to start with a three-and-out and get the ball back to your electric offense. Austin McNamara, one of the best punters in the country, will kick to Thayer Thomas. Thomas signals for a fair catch and makes it inside his own 30. Nice punt by McNamara. First offensive possession now for the Wolfpack, led by the ACC's preseason player of the year, Devin Leary. Struggled week one against ECU. Bounced back last week, albeit against a weaker opponent in Charleston Southern. But he is the nexus. He is the pivot point of this entire offense. Yeah, Devin Leary has a ton of confidence. He's got great moxie. And he's also a very tough football player. You see him get hit. He pops right back up. Week one, it just seemed like he was trying to be perfect. Where I know offensive coordinator Tim Beck tonight wants him to just settle in, take what the defense gives him, and trust what he sees out there on the field. Leary out of the pistol. Hands off to Jordan Houston. Big opening right side. Houston. Rumbles across the 40 to the 43, a gain of 16. And for all the talk about Leary and his acumen and the accolades that he got in the preseason, this is a Wolfpack offense led by its run game. You're exactly right, Anish. And you see right there, big number 74, Anthony Belton leaving the, leading the charge on the counter play. This is, don't, don't get yourself wrong, Devin Leary is extremely talented. But this is a run-first team that wants to establish the run game early. And there's Jordan Houston making a couple of guys miss, taken down inside the 40 of Texas Tech. That's what Taylor talked about in her opening hit 
Devin Leary looking to his running backs who can do that in space. Yeah, I think that's when Devin Leary really has great games. It's when they run the football well early. They get some quick, constant completions early. Breather plays, as I, I like to call them, more quick game throws and screens. That's when you get Devin rolling. Illegal block in the back. Offense number eight. Ten-yard penalty. First down. That's Julian Gray, so this one will come back. Kevin Marr, our referee in the white hat. Dave Dorn likes the fact that people are doubting NC State again. He told us that fits our demeanor a little better compared to that preseason number 13 ranking. Wolfpack dropped five spots after a win week one against ECU. Moved back up a couple of spots after the win last week. Screen pass. Here's Gray across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Brock Chick fil A impact players. Who do you have? Anish, you're going to see here Thayer Thomas, wide receiver number five for NC State. I really think the offense needs to go through this guy. When this guy gets started early in the game, touching the football, good things happen for that offense. And on the opposite side, you're going to see Tyree Wilson, big number 19 up front for the Red Raiders. Watch for that guy to cause some havoc in the trenches tonight. Wilson considered by many a potential first rounder. Leary's got time against a three-man rush. Going long. And he overthrew his intended target, Keon Lusane. So it's third down now for NC State. Yeah, and that surprises me to, to see Leary th overthrow a deep ball like that. That is definitely one of his strong suits. He throws a tremendously accurate deep ball, whether that's go, go throws, posts down the middle. That's something that Tim Beck, his offensive coordinator, says he does tremendously well. And Tim Beck for the second straight week calling the plays from upstairs, not down on the field. On third and seven, a little four-man twist by Tech. Leary steps up under pressure, thrown down right at the line of scrimmage, and it brings up a fourth down. Bryce Ramirez got to him. To me, Anish, that just looked like a coverage sack. There was tremendous coverage by the defensive backs downfield for the Red Raiders. That was blanket coverage. But also what you saw there pre-snap, Texas Tech was playing in a two-high safety look. At the snap of the ball, they rotated to a single high safety, and it seemed like it caused a little bit of confusion for Devin Leary with where that football needed to go. Shane McDonough, the Towson transfer, to punt it away, and it's Drew Hokut, the son of Texas Tech Athletic Director Kirby Hokut, waiting right at the 11-yard line. And Hokut makes the fair catch. No, he muffed it. Looks like he got that ball back. The reason he's in there is because Adrian Fry is out today, who normally handles the punt return duties. NC State says they have it, and they do. And so Hokut, who again, filling in, muffs the first punt, and the Wolfpack have a short field. Yeah, when you're not used to being the punt returner, and you're back there on the road, and especially at night, when you get that glare from the lights in the stadium, sometimes that can cause some problems for you. Like I said, it looked like it looked like Drew got the football back initially after the fumble, but then again, you never know what's going to happen at the bottom of a pile when you have guys fighting for a fumble. And who recovers the muff? Joe Shemko, the long snapper. Usually when you say a long snapper's name in a broadcast, it's not a good thing, but uh, the hustle by Shemko... One of the first down there, and the Wolfpack are set up. First down inside the 15 of Texas Tech. I'd expect a shot early into this end zone. These are those types of possessions that the NC State Wolfpack need to start capitalizing on. They need to play great complementary football, and this is one of those moments that they need to take advantage of. Thayer Thomas goes in motion, gets it on a quick screen. And Thomas takes it to the 11-yard line, a short gain of two. That's going to be a matchup to watch. NC State feels like it's got an advantage with Thomas against whoever's on him in the slot for Texas Tech. They do, and I understand why. Thayer Thomas is a tremendous football player 
from that slot wide receiver position. He's second all time for career touchdowns in school history, right behind the great Torrey Holt. Like I said earlier, when Thayer touches the ball, good things happen. Houston up the middle, and he twists down to the five yard line. It brings up a third and two. Early on, we're seeing NC State having some big holes running the football. Yeah, they do, and that's because they have a veteran offensive line that's played together. Four or five starters returned from last year's season. These guys have played a ton of football together. They have a ton of chemistry together. They borderline don't even need to make the calls because they're all so in sync. They don't even need to verbalize when they're out there together. The new starter is left tackle Anthony Belton, one of your impact players. He takes over for first round pick Icky Aquano when the coaches told us Belton right now is the best lineman up front. Demi Sumo Karngbe, the one the teammates call Sharko, is the new running back. He gets the call, shows off the patience, picks up a first down, and it's first and goal Wolfpack. Texas Tech playing man-to-man -man right now down in the red zone. Oh, they're going to say he's a little short, fourth down. One official held up a fist. They were getting ready to move the chains on the sideline. It is a first down. With Tim Beck, offensive coordinator for the Wolfpack, moving up to the booth, I'd expect for him to possibly do a check with me situation here so he can take advantage of whatever defense Texas Tech is playing. Week one against ECU. NC State had some struggles down here. Direct snap, Sumo Kornbeck. Thayer Thomas. He'll throw it back in the end zone to Leary for the touchdown. That is the fourth career touchdown pass for Thayer Thomas. Now there is a flag on the far side of the field. Well, if you feel like you've seen this play before, it's because you did. The Philadelphia Eagles ran this in the Super Bowl against the New England Patriots and hit Nick Foles for a touchdown. Well, Anthony Belton was the illegal man downfield. We were just singing his praises, so it wipes the score off the board. Philly special. Look at the left side of your screen. Left tackle Anthony Belton. Oh, yeah. Clear as day. He's in the end zone when the ball gets released. In college football, you can have an offensive lineman three yards down the field on a forward pass. But that's clear. Anthony was well past three yards. He was in the end zone. That's going to be called every single time. Two tight ends out of the pistol. Sumo Kornbe shed one tackle and then tripped up. Not much there. Marquise Waters the stop. Brock, you get down to the three-yard line. Is that too cute for your taste, or are you okay with the play call? I love the play call. I love the creativity. Players have fun with plays like this, and also, so do the fans. It really draws the stadium into the game, and whatever it takes to get the ball in the end zone, I'm all for. I think here's a situation where, offensively, you need to look for your big wide receiver down at the bottom of the screen. Number 88, Devin Carter, 6'3", 215 pounds. I'm looking for the big fella right here if I'm playing quarterback. Thayer Thomas motions. The flag is down. Ball start. Offense, number 54. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Dylan McMahon, the right guard. And that is exactly what Dave Dorn said to us yesterday. He said, we have to stop hurting ourselves pre-snap. They had two false starts last week in the red zone alone. Previous week against ECU, they had some more pre-snap penalties. He said, we have to stop beating ourselves on focus penalties. He goes, I don't mind if we have a penalty playing hard out there, but the pre-snap stuff, we have to clean up. So this backs it up to the 12-yard line, second and goal. Leary set up the screen, and Sumo Kongbe dropped it. If he catches it, that's a touchdown. Yeah, the NC State offensive line did a great job of finding the rat player. That was man-to-man -man defense by Texas Tech, which usually screens are better into zone. 
NC State caught them in man, but the offensive line did a great job of finding who was covering the running back, got a hat on him, so that was going to spark Demi into the end zone. Third down. Wolfpack will empty it out with five wide. I'd expect some pressure here. Make Devin Leary make a quick decision with where he wants to go with this football. Pressure off the edge. Leary floats one toward the end zone. Incomplete. He wanted Lashane. And he was covered by Malik Dunlap, who spent three years playing for Dave Dorn at NC State, now in his second season with the Red Raiders, 24 and white. Yeah, you don't think he knows this NC State Wolfpack offense? Tremendous coverage here. You see him just undercutting that throw. That's a ball that you like to see your receiver stick his foot and go to the back pylon to save some space for the quarterback. He really made a tough throw there for his quarterback, Devin Leary, by cutting that route short to the sideline. So Christopher Dunn, the all-time points leader at NC State, on for a field goal from 29. And the kick is good. Three times this season, the Wolfpack have had a first and goal. No touchdown so far. They do walk away, though, with three points this time. Are you ready? Okay, same McGuire was coaching high school football at Cedar Hill, a program that he turned into a Texas powerhouse. Matt Rule hired him on his first staff at Baylor in 2017. He was retained by Dave Aranda, got the head coaching job at Texas Tech this year. They told us yesterday the biggest surprise in year one is how quickly the team has bought in. And you saw that last week. A team that bought in and they go and they knock off the top 25 Houston team. Yeah, they're certainly they're certainly bought into what Joey McGuire's brought to Lubbock, Texas. There's a lot of belief. There's a lot of trust. And you can see that in the way his football team plays. Nehemiah Martinez out to the 19. Taylor? Defensive end Tyree Wilson telling me that was the immediate change within the program is there was trust amongst the coaching staff. And he told me he feels like there's instantaneous trust because of the high school football background. He said high school coaches care about you as a player, and they really, really felt that when Joey McGuire took over the program. Off to a 2-0 start at Tech, and the recruiting philosophy, too, the old regime here with Matt Wells, they went real heavy on transfers. They're getting back to getting high school guys, and you have someone with those relationships in the Texas high school ranks. Absolutely. I promise you there's no better man to recruit the state of Texas than Joey McGuire. Taj Brooks shedding a couple of tacklers. That was Nehemiah Martinez coming on the end of round. It's a gain of four, second and six. One of the things that I thought really stood out about Joey was when he first got the tech job, he didn't have a team meeting. He actually met with each individual player one-on-one. -on -one. Injury for NC State, it's a big one. Tyler, Baker, Williams, they're all conference nickelback. They attend to Tyler, Baker, Williams, and we'll step aside. Quarterback at Cedar Hill went on to become a part of the winningest class at Kansas. Jordan Houston with a big hole and takes it into Texas Tech territory, pushed out by his old teammate Malik Dunlap. Taylor, that's not the only connection, though, on the staff. It is not. In 2003, Joey McGuire's first year at Cedar Hill, his team was 5-4 and four it and defeated an undefeated 9-0 Summit team. Now, the head coach of that Summit team, OC of NC State, Tim Beck. The two are good friends to this day. Houston. Inside the 40 for a gain of four. There's Tim Beck in the booth again, and part of the reason he's upstairs, Brock, is last year they felt they needed him down on the field for Devin Leary. Not anymore. Certainly, and he also wants to see the game better. There's a lot of communication that has to come from your assistant coaches down to the field when you're the play caller on the field versus if you just sit in the booth, you can see everything that's happening in real time. Leary's got time incomplete for Thomas. Flag on the play. Reggie Pearson, the safety and coverage. I think we're going to have defensive pass interference here. Defense number two, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, Reggie Pearson really just really forcing Thayer Thomas out of bounds. <clears throat> 
Thayer Thomas is trying to run a big box fade, which really is an inside slot go route. And just there, Reggie Pearson, a little undisciplined there with his coverage. Got a little too handsy too early with Thayer Thomas. So first and 10 now from the 23. Trips left. Houston is the running back. There he's got time again in the pocket. Now steps up. Now thrown down. That's Tyree Wilson, 6'6", 275, with his first sack of the game. Yeah, there's a big physical presence right there with Tyree Wilson. When you were talking to the NC State staff yesterday, you could tell they had a little bit of concern in their eyes when it came to Tyree and the impact that he could have on this game. Right there, he's going against the best offensive lineman for NC State, Anthony Belton, that left tackle. Looked like Anthony thought he was going to have a little bit more help by his guard to the inside. Tyree does a tremendous job of splitting those two and making the big play. Second down and 18 on the draw. Houston got some of it back, took a big hit, flagged down at the very end of the play. And an injured player for Texas Tech. Holding. Offense number 52, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Number 54, Bryce Ramirez is down for Texas Tech. Penalty is on Timothy McKay. Fourth penalty against the pack. That looked like friendly fire. remains down and Joey McGuire coming all the way across the field to check on his junior linebacker from the replay you know, that did not look like a pretty injury. Bring the cart out. We'll step aside. 402 to go, first quarter. In Raleigh. Let's send it back out to an East Shroff. Kevin, thank you. Jordan Houston gets the call on second and 27, picks up two. Third and 25, NC State. A, a somber moment, a somber few minutes here at Carter Finley. Bryce Ramirez, one of the linebackers for Texas Tech, went down. Now, we watched the replay. We decided not to show it to you. It was a gruesome leg injury. He was just carted off. So we hope that young man can recover quickly and speedily and, and get back to being healthy. I'd love to see some pressure by Tim DeRuiter's Red Raider defense here, trying to knock and make sure that NC State does not get into field goal range here. Four-man rush by Tech over the middle. Wide open with Saint on the drag. And he's tripped up at the 30. That's Malik Dunlap again. Former NC State defensive back making a, a big tackle. That would have been a few extra yards if Dunlap wasn't there. It's fourth down instead. And I understand that it's third and long and you don't want to give up the big one. But you also have an opportunity to knock NC State out of field goal range and not even give them a chance at points. I'd like to see the Red Raiders be a little more aggressive there defensively. But nevertheless, great stop against a short field. This will be a 47-yarder for Christopher Dunn. Career long is 53. And this one is good. 
So two field goals by Dunn, one from 29, one from 47, and it's 6-0 NC State. Next week, our Saturday night football game presented by Capital One is a Big Ten battle at the Shoe in Columbus. C.J. Stroud and number three, Ohio State, will host Wisconsin. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreit have the call at 7.30 Eastern on ABC. Buckeyes had a bit of a sluggish opener against Notre Dame right now. Up a couple of scores on Toledo. Yeah, that's going to be a fun one. C.J. Stroud, exceptional talent there at quarterback. And then I love watching the Badgers. You know what they're going to do every Saturday when they show up. They're going to run the football. They got a big, strong offensive line. It's going to be a great matchup in the Midwest. Colin Smith will kick it off. Texas Tech has gone three and out on its first two possessions. Meanwhile, NC State has won 12 of its 16 plays in Red Raider territory so far. Only six points, though. Martinez, a yard deep. And he's tripped up shy of the 20-yard line. Terrific special teams play by Devin Boykin. And one thing we've noticed, NC State's coverage on kicks and punts have been solid through these first two plus games. Donovan Smith so far two for four only eight yards and, and the chess match in this game. Tony Gibson the D coordinator for NC State the way he disguises coverages and blitzes and then Zach Kitley the offensive coordinator for Texas Tech. A lot of folks see him as the next Lincoln Riley. I want to see Zach here on this possession call some quick game call some quick perimeter throws. You're struggling getting the run game established. Just call sweeps and things on the outside. Those are also like run plays. Here's Sir Roderick Thompson, and he catapults to the 28-yard line. A nice pickup. And it looks like he'll have it up for a first down, a gain of 10, and that's the first first down of the game for the Red Raiders. Thompson, a fifth-year senior, team's top rusher in 2019 and 2020. And now Tempo off the first down, and a flag. Ball start. Offense number 72. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Those are the type of things the Red Raiders are going to need to stay away from tonight if they're going to have success on the road. You already have a tall enough task with a young quarterback going against this stingy defense. You cannot hurt yourself pre snap. Pressure off the edge. It's the safety blitz timed perfectly. And so Roderick Thompson tackled back inside the 20. It was Tanner Engel and Savion Jackson who teamed up. What a great timely call by Tony Gibson. That run was going to go nowhere. Didn't matter what the offensive line did. When you send a corner off of the edge into the direction that the run's coming, that's always going to be a tackle for a loss. So now second and 20, and this Texas Tech offense missing a key piece up front. No Weston White, a four-year starter at left guard. Jacoby Jackson, 75 and White, making his first career start on the road at Carter Finley against a number 16 team. It is his first career start, but he got some solid playing time last week. Got a little bit of playing time the year before, and the coaches said he did a great job last week when he needed to step in for the injured Weston Wright. His dad and uncle both played in the NFL, so great bloodlines. Officials huddling it over. It's second and 20 for now. Second down. Delays have dangerous ends. Be on the lookout for quarterback run here with Donovan Smith. Very dangerous with his legs. He's got time in the pocket, slings it to Thompson, his running back. And so Roderick Thompson cyclones his way to the 30-yard line as we check in with Kevin in the studio.
Today's Capital One rewarding performance update. Blinding speed for Ohio State. Jet sweep. Ameka Abuka. The touchdown run. They've got touchdowns from Travion Henderson and Marvin Harrison Jr. as well. Anish. Uh, meanwhile, we got a timeout here. Timeout. From NC State. NC State. Their first for the half, 30 seconds in length. Third down and eight, 45 seconds to go in this opening quarter. And yeah, so far, this first quarter defensively, it's been NC State setting the, ta setting the tone, setting the table. Yeah, they've done a great job. And it's really because Texas Tech has not been able to sustain drives and get first downs. But you know how you know a young quarterback is starting to get it? Last week, Donovan Smith had three interceptions. He forced some balls late down the field that were picked off. Well, right there on that second down play, everything was covered downfield. He felt the pocket collapsing, and he dumped it and checked it down to his running back. He got half the distance back, and now he made it a third and manageable. That's taken big strides from week two into week three. Now, Smith did not open the season as the starter. That was Tyler Shuck, the Oregon transfer. Shuck is out with a shoulder injury. They expect him back at the very latest, the end of October. If I'm Texas Tech right here, I'm going to test Tyler Baker Williams, who's at the bottom of your screen, number 13. He came off the field with an ankle injury. I want to find out if that ankle's good to go. Smith will run. He's got room, turns the corner, and thrown down to the Texas Tech bench by Peyton Wilson, who's back after missing last week's game due to an injury suffered in week one. That's a big-time play by number 11, Peyton Wilson. Listen, I'm, I was down on the field pregame, and I looked down. That guy's got NFL written all over him. He's got the size, and you can see the speed there. You when we know more. All right, thank you, Taylor. 6-0 the score, second quarter about to begin. Austin McNamara will punt it away to Thayer Thomas. Red Raiders did not have much success offensively. Just 28 yards on 10 plays in that opening quarter. A couple of miscues as well. Thomas near the sideline makes the fair catch right at the 25 yard line after a 42 yard kick. NC State got its first three points on a field goal after a muffed punt by Drew Hokut, who was in there due to the injury for Adrian Fry. And then McNamara shanked a punt, which gave the Wolfpack a short field. That turned into three more points. But if you're NC State, Brock, you kind of feel like you've left something. You know, out on the field, first drive, they had a first and goal, had to settle for three, and then uh, penalties, negative plays, sent them back on their next scoring drive. If you're NC State with the expectations that you have for this season, the goals you have for this season, those field goals need to be touchdowns. I'd keep feeding the rock to Jordan Houston and Demi. They're running the heck out of the football right now early in the game. That one intended for Carter, broken up. Dunlap in coverage again. Again, returning to his old stopping grounds at second down and 10. When you look at this Wolfpack receiving game, who's got to step up and be the guy with the Mecca Amezi having moved on? Devin Carter. You, you know what you're getting in the slot with Thayer Thomas. He's going to be consistent. He's going to be solid. He'll, he'll catch the ball if it comes his way. But Devin Carter, the big guy outside, 6'3", 215 at the top of your screen. They, NC State needs to find a way to get this guy going because he's extremely explosive. Here's Houston. And he picks up nine. It sets up a third down and one. And to your point, Carter, only four catches through the first two games. Yeah, and ultimately what NC State does best and what they really want to do on first and second down is run the football. They're already averaging over seven yards per carry for this game. Keep feeding Demi. Keep feeding Jordan. And good things are going to happen. And then eventually you will get Texas Tech into man-to-man -man defense. Go play action. Take your shot with Devin Carter. Two tight ends here on third and short. Sumo Kong Bay is tripped up. No gain. Marquise Waters with the big play. It's fourth down. And that's just the Red Raiders right there winning the line of scrimmage. On the initial snap, half that defensive line was in the backfield, just pushing the Wolfpack back. That's a big stop for Texas Tech. NC State just trying to run a little split zone inside. Zone blocking scheme by the offensive line, hat for a hat, bringing the tight end back, trying to get the linebackers to flow and find a crease. Texas Tech does a tremendous job pushing that line of scrimmage into the backfield. So Hokut 
whose muffed punt led to three points earlier in the first quarter. Waits at the 21. McDonough boots this one away. Fair catch is called for and made, this time cleanly at the 19, after a 47-yard punt from Shane McDonough. Texas Tech and Donovan Smith back on offense when we return. start before picking it up. Houston with a pick six to tie the game at 17. A pair of field goals sent the game into overtime. Cougars go up 27-20 in OT. Texas Tech responds with a touchdown run. Taj Brooks that tied it at 27 and then Donovan Smith. Quarterback run. There's your game winner. But in that game Texas Tech off to a slow start. Only three points in the first quarter. Let's see if they can pick it up here in the second quarter. 13-18 to go before halftime. First and 10. We'll keep it on the ground, and the Wolfpack defense is there. That's going to be a loss of a yard. Isaiah Moore, who wears that number one jersey, which goes to the Wolfpack player who best embodies their program. Three-time captain with the TFL. You're seeing Texas Tech play some solid tempo here hoping to force the NC State defense into a base call and get them out of their exotic pressures. Smith under pressure. There's more once again. Isaiah Moore running, running through the line of scrimmage on the pressure. You're going to see him come through on the middle of your screen, just not being accounted for within the pass protection by Texas Tech. Donovan Smith had his tight end down the middle quickly, but he needed to make a quick decision, which is very difficult to do for a young quarterback. Russian four. Smith with time. Off the hands of Nehemiah Martinez. It would not have been a first down, even if he caught it. And three and out for Texas Tech. So, so far, the coverage disguising the blitzing, disguising where the pressure's coming from, it's worked, and Donovan Smith does not look comfortable. It's worked. Tony Gibson just got a free rusher. His best player on defense, Isaiah Moore, to get no one to even lay a hand on him, ran right through the line, ended that series for NC State. However, give Donovan Smith credit. He gets hit, he comes back on third down, makes a great throw, an absolute dime. Martinez needs to make that catch in order to help flip the field position here. Nice loss on. Yeah, he's capable of flipping the field position, even from his own end zone. Won't do it here. It takes a Wolfpack bounce, and NC State begins in plus territory. Those are two shanked punts today by Mac. His third grade teacher, Miss Pierce, who challenged him to read because he hated reading, and she pushed him so much that to this day, he is an avid reader. So credit to Miss Pierce and credit to the teachers everywhere, guys. On first down, Leary hands it off to Houston. And he'll lose two yards. Extra yard for Teachers Week is an annual back-to-school effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to recognize and show appreciation to great teachers across the country to support Extra Yard for Teachers recognition and resources initiatives. Follow at CFP Extra Yard or scan the QR code for more. We got the sense from Coach McGuire yesterday, a teacher at heart building relationships when he recruits, he tells parents, pick any kid from any high school team I coached. Call the kid, call their parents. If you want a referral and a reference on me, the relationship building is a big part of what he's done. As Taylor told you earlier, he had to earn the trust of this roster. He's been able to do that as Christopher Tootle gets to the 40. And it's a third down and seven. Again, another opportunity for NC State. Short field. Can they capitalize? Two players I'd watch for here. You gotta watch for number five, Thayer Thomas for NC State working from the slot. He's number three, right next to your left tackle. And number 88, Devin Carter. Gotta find a way to get the big guy going outside. The guy's full of talent. Leary finds Thomas. And he makes the catch inside the 30 for an NC State first down and gain of 11. Got some laundry on the field. Personal foul 
Illegal hands to the face. Defense number 19. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, that's big Tyree Wilson. We knew he was going to be a possible game record today on that NC State offensive line. Made a big play earlier in the game. Got to just stay disciplined with your hands. Every once in a while, you'll see defensive linemen get those hands up by the face mask. It's going to be a foul every time. And you're going to see here just that left hand clear as day on Anthony Belton's face mask. Got to stay disciplined and keep those hands low in the chest. Red zone opportunity for NC State. Sumo Kongbe gets the edge, gets the end zone. Nothing after the PAT. NC State doing what they do best, and that's running the football with Demi Sumo Kongbe. Tremendous run to the perimeter. I know Demi Sumo Kongbe is a very physical, intimidating runner at 210 pounds. But here, the senior transfer from Wisconsin, Reggie Pearson, just kind of says, Hey, I don't really want anything to do with you right now, and I'm just going to let you walk into the end zone. Kind of a strange play. Yeah, and he's probably getting an earful right now from Tim DeRuiter. Martinez from the three. Has the 20. And gets the pile push across the 25 to the 28. And now some laundry at the 40-yard line. Looks like a little altercation going out of bounds over there on the Texas Tech sideline. Personal foul, face mask. Return team number 89. Half of this is to the goal. First down. Now that's Jaden York. And we'll check in with Kevin in the studio. Eddie, yeah, I just want to let you know what's going around uh, on in college football in the evening window here. You've got a Michael Penix touchdown pass giving Washington an early lead on Michigan State over on ABC. Florida fell behind, but they've taken the lead on USF. That game going on right now over on ESPNU. And Mississippi State LSU on ESPN. And here it's 13 0 NC State and Texas Tech unable to get any traction offensively. It's a small sample size. It's only two games, but the Red Raiders came in with the number one passing offense in the country, and that was against Murray State and a Houston team which was ranked last week, but currently on the verge of losing to Kansas. They yeah. also came in with a top 10 offense overall. Uh, they've had nothing offensively so far. Yeah, the Red Raiders have put up some great stats early in the season, but let's not kid ourselves. This is the best defense they've faced. Smith against a three-man rush. Over the middle, he's got Miles Price. And that is just the second first down of the game for Texas Tech, a gain of 13. It's their longest play of the game. And now you can activate tempo if you want. Absolutely. A lot of times coaches wait to get the first first down of the series before they go fast because they don't want to have a quick three and out and put their defense back on the field. Thomas bringing pressure, and that one sails over the head of Fungi. Ball was a little high, but you would love to see Fungi go up and make that play for his young quarterback. Great to see Texas Tech get an explosive play to get this drive started. You know, Coach said this team doesn't really flinch at anything. 
they always have a what's next mentality. So the fact that they're down in this game 13 to 0 and they're trying to fight back doesn't surprise me one bit. Red Raiders averaging about two yards of play so far. On the ground. And Brooks gets nowhere. Isaiah Moore, he's been making plays all over. Third down. If you don't get a helmet on Isaiah Moore, number one for NC State, your run game's just going to go nowhere. The guy can, he can play sideline to sideline. He's very fast. He's big. He's strong. He's physical. He can shed blocks with the offensive line. Got to get a hat on him. Safety blitz. Smith rolls out. Eyes up. Has to get rid of it. It's caught. It's his running back, Brooks. A gain of 18 on the play. And Texas Tech moves the chains. I go back to what the Red Raider coaches told us yesterday. With Donovan Smith, sometimes the fundamentals may not be as precise, but he can also do things you can't teach. Yes, and NC State said it yesterday. They have to keep Donovan Smith in the pocket. If they don't, they know he can hurt them. Brooks picked up the blitz to throw downfield. Incomplete. Broken up by Derek Pitts. Intended for Bradley. Right here, Jerome Bradley, 6'5", wide receiver, lined up with Pitts. Pitts does a great job of getting eyes on that football and knowing when to go up and make a play. Tremendous pass break up there. Bradley leads the team with a dozen catches entering play. Has won so far today. High snap. Brooks flagged down. Play is blown dead. Ball start. Offense number 71. Penalty. Still second out. Yeah, the sophomore right tackle there getting started a little bit early with his job. Cannot put yourself behind the sticks when you're playing a great opponent like the NC State Wolfpack. There's Zach Kitley on the sideline a moment ago. Joey McGuire, the head coach. Texas Tech looking to beat ranked opponents in back to back weeks for the first time in a decade. Smith slings it to his running back, Brooks, who hammerheads close to midfield. And he got to about the original line of scrimmage, maybe an extra yard or two. Once again, great discipline by the young quarterback, Smith. All of his targets down the field were covered in blanket coverage by the Wolfpack defense. He did the next best thing with the ball and checked it down to his running back so he'd go pick up some extra yards. Third and seven. I'd expect pressure here by that Wolfpack defense. They want to force that young quarterback into a quick decision. And instead, it's a run play. Sir Roderick Thompson to the outside, across the 40, and a first down. Did they change that play at the line of scrimmage? What a block by Donovan Smith. They did, and that is the chess match of football right there. NC State was bringing pressure. Donovan Smith audible. So then what does NC State do? Then they audible to zone coverage. <laughs> and Donovan Smith is your lead blocker. What a chess match. That was great. That's 6'5", 230. First play in Wolfpack territory. Smith steps up, and he's taken down from behind. C.J. Clark. And that's been the story for Texas Tech. You get a little something, and then you're behind the chains. That's just a young quarterback trying to do a little too much. He was trying to work the left side of the field. They had some vertical routes down the field. They were covered. Rather than just checking it down to the flat where he had a check down, he tried to wheel back to the right and make a play. Just take what the defense gives you. Smith rolling out under pressure. Able to complete. He's got Mason Thorpe. That's the big tight end. He's Brock Osweiler big. 6'9". And it brings up a third down. 
This block is just too good not to get back to. Watch number seven quarterback Donovan Smith. Not only does he lay a block, he lays a pancake block on the defensive back there. Not something you normally see out of your starting quarterback. If he played for the Wolfpack, he'd get a syrup bottle tomorrow. And a timeout by Dave Doran. Texas Tech with a little thing called Uncle Mo on its side for the first time tonight. Yeah, they run the inside zone. Great blocking up front. He's untouched all the way to the end zone. Great movement and uh, a big time run. USF, though, has just kicked a field goal at each 10 10 game over on the SEC network. Wow. Big third down and 11 here for Texas Tech. The safety, Jakeen Harris, into the box. Delayed pressure. Throw to the sideline. It's a rifle. And it's caught by Bradley. He's going to be a little short. And do you go for it, Brock? I think you do. I think you're playing to win the game on the road. It's obviously going to be tough to get touchdowns today. You're down here. It's time to be aggressive. Trying to make this fourth down conversion. So Roderick Thompson checks in at running back. And remember, you've got a 6'5", 230-pound QB. They go empty. This could be quarterback run. Smith takes a hit. Overthrows Boyd. It's intercepted. And this could be a pick six. Aiden White down the sideline. Touchdown, NC State. It's an 84-yard interception return for a touchdown by Aiden White. The third pick of his career. And right when Texas Tech looked like it was on the verge. Oh, did the pendulum swing the other way? Twenty to nothing after the PAT. Yeah, we all knew if Texas Tech was going to compete in this game, Donovan Smith was going to have to stay away from the big mistake. It looks like he's just on a different page than his wide receiver there. It looks like he's trying to make a back shoulder throw, but the receiver is running the go route down the field and really not looking back for it. Just seemed like a little bit of quarterback wide receiver miscommunication there. You know, I wonder after what Zach Kitley, the OC, told us yesterday, when they go empty, a lot of times those quarterback draws have a pass component to it. Brock, you wonder, was Donovan Smith thinking, hey, first option is to run, and then maybe there was a little bit of a processing delay when he realized he didn't have anywhere to run. It's actually in reverse order, and, and I assume that's what Zach Kittley was going to call there, a pass option that had a draw component built into it for the quarterback, and it looked like right there, Donovan Smith committed to throwing the football and didn't look to run at all with his legs to try to convert that first down. Once again, I don't mind the, the call. I like the aggressive decision. You just got to get your young quarterback on the same page as his wide receivers. Yeah, that is now eight straight games with an interception for NC State. Martinez, did he step out of bounds? Almost. Awfully close still. The Texas Tech Red Raiders will start inside the 15-yard line as we check in with Kevin. And it is coming up on the DirecTV Halftime Report. Look who's back in Fayetteville and look what's happening to the Razorbacks. We'll check in on that game. Plus, finish of the day. The party continues in Boone, North Carolina. What a win again for Appalachian State. And maybe the statement win of the day going down 
in Eugene. All coming up when you join me and Coach Dan Mullen for the DirecTV Halftime Report. App State has been the best entertainment dollar in college football so far. And I'm telling you, that party, it's going to move from boom to blowing rock and probably banner elk by the time they're done this week. And a flag. Play clock was at zero. We're a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First Can't down. happen. You just, you, you, you cannot have pre-snap penalties like that. When your unit's running on from the sideline, if you're going to beat great opponents, we're really going to find out right now who the young quarterback is for the Texas Tech Ra Red Raiders. Can he have a short memory, forget that interception, and put a great drive together right here? Smith steps up, will run, and slides down shy of the 10. They mark him at the 8 where he began to slide. Donovan Smith so far. Four rushes, minus eight. Sacks are a part of that. Eight for 14 throwing. 69 yards, no touchdowns, and a pick. And he has not been helped by six penalties from the Red Raiders. You're not going to win big football games with pre-snap penalties and not converting first downs. Miles Price makes the catch, steps out of bounds, got four, maybe five. NC State just playing a soft zone there. You can tell they're very happy with where this football game is. They don't want to give up the big, cheap play by bringing too much pressure, playing too much man-to-man, -man, which allows for big plays down the field. They're just playing a soft zone right now and keeping everything in front of them. Out of the backfield, Brooks. And the Wolfpack swarm to the football. It's fourth down. McNamara will have to punt it away. And with less than three minutes to go, remember, McNamara's had two punts, one of 30, one less than 30. Now he doesn't hit this one well. NC State's going to have great field position before halftime. Yeah, and Austin's traditionally a great, reliable punter. He's on the Ray Guy watch list, which goes to the punter of the year in college football. I know that Red Raider sideline right now wants to see him boom one down the field. Yeah, he hit an 87-yarder a couple of years ago against West Virginia. Yeah, that's more like it. Thomas chased inside his 35. Fair catch made at the 32. Let's take a look at the Taco Bell with my student section. Student sections across the country are competing to be the Luke Moss student section of the year all season long. They understood the assignment. Pack and black on the field, and mostly in black in the student section. 11 straight home wins. Fifth longest active home win streak in the country behind only Clemson, Oregon, Bama, and Georgia. to the air on first down. Steps up, launches deep down the sideline. Incomplete, broken up. They wanted Julian Gray, Malik Dunlap, who again played for NC State. We keep saying his name. He's amped up today. He's been the best defensive player so far for the Red Raiders tonight. Are you surprised, Anish? You know anytime a player goes against his old team, he's always going to bring his best stuff. Tremendous job of getting his head around there and playing the football as that ball was coming into the wide receiver. Tremendous Le pass breakup. Leary, 6 out of 11, 38 yards. Rooks, the motion man. Houston! Lasso down in the backfield. Tyreek Matthews blew that one up. It's third and long. And we get a timeout. Yeah, Tyreek was not confused for, for the slightest bit. You're going to see him run right through. No one's accounting for him in this counter scheme. Makes a tremendous play. 
Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 2.15.15. Week two of your NFL Sunday kicks off at 10 a.m. Eastern with the countdown crew. All the early breaking stories, injury updates, and previews of each game right up to kickoff. Also coming this week on Sunday Countdown before the Super Bowl champion Rams look to bounce back. We go one-on-one -on -one with Matthew Stafford. Randy Moss will rank the best catches from the weekend of college football action. And then Monday Night Football, doubleheader. Titans, Bills, Buffalo looked like world beaters in week one, taking it to the defending champion Rams. Vikings and Eagles and Brock, this receiver matchup. Oh, A.J. Brown and Justin Jefferson, who already is in the conversation for best receiver in the NFL. If you like explosive plays and exciting football, make sure you don't miss this one. It's going to be a tremendous football game. Leary's throw intended for Rooks. It's fourth down. And once again, talking about quarterbacks and receivers just being on different pages. Now flip it over to NC State, and that's what you had there. Looked like Leary was trying to throw in the back shoulder on the go route, and Rooks thought that ball was coming over the top and continued downfield. Something you don't see very often from a veteran quarterback with a lot of playing experience. Third punt for McDonough. From an all colonial punter for Towson. And Hokut, who had a muff earlier, waits at the 26. Again, no Adrian Fry normally handling the punting return duties for Texas Tech. He's injured and out. And that's not a good kick. It goes out of bounds. And let's see where they spot this one. The Red Raiders will have it at the 40, by far their best starting field position of the night. The NC State defense has really controlled this entire football game tonight. There's been nowhere for the Red Raiders to run the football. They've struggled pushing the ball down the field, throwing, and they just haven't been able to convert first downs. They're not getting a hat on the hat in the pass game. But I do have to say this, as bad as it feels right now for Texas Tech, if they can find a way to get in the end zone on this drive, this game will have a much better feel for the Red Raiders going into the third quarter. Four-yard run by Sir Roderick Thompson. It's second and six. Texas Tech with two timeouts left. Less than two minutes to go. First half, Red Raiders looking to get on the board. Thompson again. Snakes back to the middle across the 50 at first down. And Sir Roderick Thompson's been one of the few bright spots on this offense so far. Absolutely. Not only is the guy a tremendous runner, but he can also catch the football to the backfield. He's great in pass protection. He's a true all-around running back. There's a laser to the sideline. Miles Price. Did he catch it in bounds? He did. It's a first down at the 39. Great job by Miles Price coming back to the football. He's running a stop route at about 15 yards and working straight back down his stem back to the quarterback. Makes a very friendly angle for the quarterback, Donovan Smith, to get rolling. And they will take a look at that. Well, the initial ruling, ruling on the field, is the a second catch. down short of the line again. The previous play so is going to have to be review. indisputable video evidence to overturn this. And you're looking at two things here. One, you're looking at the catch. Two, you're looking at the spot. Where's the ball when he's down? Again, the ruling on the field was catch and first down. So you got to find something here that conclusively overturns that. Great throw by Donovan Smith, putting it only where his receiver can make a play on the ball, low and away. It's definitely a catch. The question is the spot. And our screens are pixelating, so I'm not sure we can tell. Maybe you can. I'm just not sure there's anything conclusive here, Brock. 
No, it's right at the marker. It's tough to see with the angles we have here. Now, originally, they were moving the chains. Then I guess they changed the ruling on the field to say he's short of the first down. Originally, they were moving the chains. The official signaled first down. Now they've got the two up on the down marker. So I think they have the call right. It, it's, it's a clear cut catch. This, fit, this feels like a stand. Yeah, but it certainly looks like he's just a little bit short of the marker. They made the right call on this one. Yeah, so that's the important distinction here the original ruling on the field. They did change before the review to second and one instead of first and ten. I love what NC State's doing on this drive right now. They came out with two run plays right away, and they did that because just in case they don't get a first down, they're trying to milk this clock so they don't give it, give the NC State offense too much time to go score again. But hey, credit the Red Raiders. They're getting After the further run. review, the ruling on the field stands. The clock will start on my signal. It'll be second down. Credit the Red Raiders. They haven't been able to run the football tonight. It's been really tough sledding inside for them. NC State's done a tremendous job of moving that line of scrimmage. But hey, how do you get a young quarterback settled and start running the football successfully? And that's what the Red Raiders are doing on this drive. So second and one. Playbook should be open. Teeter the tight end in motion. Play action. Smith has time. Fires deep into the end zone. In traffic, it's broken up, but flags down. Got there a little too early. Devin Boykin in coverage against Trey Cleveland. You gotta love that Donovan Smith gave his receiver a chance to make a play. That's what drew the pass, pass interference. interference call. Defense number 12. But that's that play that you love to see the young quarterback let it go a little bit down. sooner and trust the timing of his feet because his receiver had a step on him. And that was a clear cut touchdown if he lets that ball go a little bit sooner. Yeah, Boykin got there just a hair early. So first and 10, ball on the 24, less than a minute to go in the half. They fake the end around. Smith takes a hit, has Price open. Can he get away? He does. Touchdown, Texas Tech on the board. Great job of taking advantage of the aggressiveness that NC State's defense is playing with. They brought an all-out pressure, and Donovan Smith is able to recognize that and get it to his playmaker price in space. You're going to see the all-out blitz there. Got Isaiah Moore coming up the middle, but Donovan Smith does a great job of making an accurate throw down the field. That happened on the, on the first possession of the game. NC State run all-out blitz. Donovan Smith almost made him pay for it. But he makes him pay for it this time. Used the uh, right trigger on Cyrus Fagan, the safety. And now it's Trey Wolf. Who hits the PAT? It's 20 to 7. If the Sun can force a game four in the WNBA Finals, it'll be Sunday afternoon, 4 Eastern on ESPN. And the app WNBA countdown tips off at 3 Eastern. Brock, if you're Texas Tech, look at this first half. You say, all right, you just got seven. You gave NC State seven with the pick six. You gave them three with the muff punt that led to a field goal. You gave them a short field on a shank punt, which led to a field goal. That's 13 points. That's the game. It is. And if you're Joey McGuire on that Texas Tech sideline, you really feel like, hey, we can't play any worse, boys. So for them to come out here after not playing a great first half, and finding a way to get seven going into halftime, that builds a lot of momentum for your football team going into the second half. Especially when you can say, listen, these are self-inflicted wounds. Absolutely. They're things that are within your control to be able to clean up. And I'm sure he's going to stress that at halftime. But don't forget, there's still 50 seconds on the clock right now. And NC State has a very explosive offense. This is, key, this is a key drive for Texas Tech to keep them out of the end zone. And the Wolfpack will receive the second half kick as well. NC State will begin at the 25 yard line. All right, Brock, you've got a timeout. 75 yards to go. How do you play this final series knowing 
you get the ball to begin the third. Well, well, listen, you feel very good about how your team played in the first half. Obviously, you wish you got some touchdowns in the red zone on some of those trips where you settled for field goals, but you feel good about the score right now, so you don't want to put the ball in harm's way, but there still is time to go get more points. So I'm going to try to pop like a quick slant here, a pretty safe throw, but if you can get an explosive gain on it, now your mindset changes and you say, hey, we're going to go try to go get some more points. But if you don't have a successful play on first down, maybe you just go into halftime happy with where things are at. Only 94 yards, but 20 points for NC State. There's Julian Gray on the fly sweep. And he's thrown down across the 30 to the 32, a gain of seven. Clock continues to run. NC State in no apparent hurry. No, and with a play call like that, and with the subtle gain that you got, looks like NC State just happy going into halftime with the score the way it is, unless something funky happens right here. On the delay, Subo Kongbe. And he picks up a first down that'll momentarily stop the clock. Ball on the 38, 18 seconds to go. The Wolfpack have a timeout. Leary looking to the sideline. And now they spot the ball, so the clock starts. Leary's looking to the sideline like he wants to make a throw down the field, try to go get some points. It seems a little in this football game, and you're playing the way that you want to right now. A pick six, a muffed punt led to an NC State field goal. Another shanked punt led to a short field and a Wolfpack field goal. That's 13 points. That's the ball game. NC State will receive to begin the third quarter. Moments ago, Taylor McGregor caught up with Joey McGuire, Texas Tech's head coach. Coach, how do you get your offense into a rhythm? You know, we got to catch the ball. I mean, we had some chances, deep balls. We didn't catch the ball. We got to go attack their corners. We got to catch the ball. And then I was proud of the way we ran the ball late in the second half. I mean, the second quarter. We got to do that again. What was your message to Donovan Smith? Take what they're giving you, and then, you know, it's fourth and one. Go be big, beat, you know, 6'5", 230 pounds, and get the first down, and and uh, we'll do better. I mean, that was, we had a lot of self-inflicted wounds right there. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Jordan Houston in the backfield. He gets the call on first down and crashes across to the 28-yard line. A game of three, Jalen Hutchins with the stop. Taylor, what did Dave Doran tell you? Well, offensively, he feels like they need to make adjustments. He said Texas Tech defensively was showing some things that they were not expecting. Now, defensively, you can imagine he loves the way that his defense is playing. He felt like at the end of the first half, it was really just they were tired, so they want to continue the dominance on defense. Devin Leary, the ACC preseason player of the year, hands it off to Houston, who's bottled at the 30, a gain of two. Tony Bradford is there. It's third down. And, and listen, there, there's a lot of football to play. First series of the third quarter, not to make too much of it. But if Texas Tech can get a stop again, they get the ball back, and they're able to score. The, the, the temperature of this game changes. You're right. This is a very critical third down for the NC State offense. I would expect to see some pressure by Tim DeRuder's defense here, trying to get Devin off his spot, trying to confuse him, and seeing if they could possibly force a turnover. On third down, Leary steps up. Down he goes. That's Tyree Wilson, his second sack. A man with first-round potential who transferred in from Texas A&M. Now in his third season as a Red Raider, and McDonough will punt. And he's showing that first-round potential. There's not even a great move here. He just says, hey, I'm bigger than you, I'm stronger than you, and he has this tremendous speed-to-power move that you see there. And once Tyree Wilson gets his two hands on your chest and he's pushing on you, it's game over. So for an offensive lineman, you got to knock his hands down. Otherwise, Tyree's going to win that one-on-one -on -one battle every single time. Hocut retreats inside his own 20 from the 16. 
And he cuts a jagged path back to the 21. A 58-yard punt to flip the field by McDonough. You're watching the ACC on ESPN and Ishraf Brock Osweiler and Taylor McGregor down on the field with an injury update. Tyler Baker Williams, NC State's best defensive back, who's had three turnovers this season, will not return. He suffered that ankle injury in the first half. Also to note, Texas Tech linebacker Dimitri Moore out with a leg injury. Now the big one there is Tyler Baker Williams, who's been a chaos agent for this Wolfpack defense. First down, Sir Roderick Thompson running backwards, bottled, and thrown down by Tanner Engel, the safety. It's a loss of two. Well, if he doesn't run into his own guy there, there was nobody behind that first level. Could have been a home run, home run ball for the Red Raiders there to start this series. Second down and 12, and this has been the issue for Texas Tech offensively. They've been behind the chains a lot tonight. Cleveland in motion. Smith steps up, throws. And that is brought in. There's Tharp again. I want to see you guys post up one on one. 6 8 versus 6 9. Well, I tell you what, I wish I played with a 6 9 tight end. That is a tremendous weapon for a quarterback. But credit Donovan Smith there. NC State came out and showed an all out blitz zero pressure look. And at the snap of the ball, they ran back to zone coverage. Donovan Smith stayed cool, eyes down the field, and made a great throw. Smith, 13 out of 19. Sixth career start. Hands it off. No, he'll keep it. And it's Sir Roderick Thompson. Looks like Peyton Wilson got a clean lick on him. And he ends up turning that into nine yards to set up a second down and one. The fifth year senior from Irving, Texas. I tell you what, Thompson is a tough runner. Peyton Wilson coming off the edge with the blitz at 6'4, 240 pounds. Doesn't face Thompson, spins right out of it. Makes a big time play for the Red Raiders offense. And Donovan Smith again trying to be the lead blocker as he was before. Here's Thompson bouncing to the outside. He's got the first down. And the ball now at the 45-yard line. Peyton Wilson, who led the ACC in tackles two years ago with the stop. And uh, Brock, you're starting to see it in subtle ways. But Donovan Smith, just his third season, injured two years ago, started four games last year, thrust in his QB1 with the injury to Tyler Shuck. He's been growing up in this game little by little before our eyes. I tell you what, I'm super impressed watching him tonight. Yes, he does have that pick six. He has that big mistake from tonight. But outside of that one play, he looks like he belongs out there. He's comfortable and he's making great decisions. They've got two spies now. And he's taken down from behind. C.J. Clark in the backfield. A loss of A just as we sing his praises. We know he's got the potential, but there you saw some of the rawness. And that's what you cannot do as a quarterback on the road. You have to trust the internal timing of your feet. Once you've taken two or three hitches, you have to understand it is time to either throw that football to one of your targets or throw it away. You cannot take a sack and put your team in second and long. Wolfpack rush three. Smith back pedals. The flare is incomplete over the head of Brooks, who fell down. And it's going to be third and 18. No fool in NC State there. They sniffed out that screen pass from the get-go. Great job with their eye discipline in staying true to their rules on that defensive play. Smith with a clean pocket. Checks down to Brooks. Driven down right at the 42 by Aiden White. It's fourth down. This Wolfpack defense has done its part. Three sacks, a pick six, six TFLs. Smart play there by Donovan Smith. Nothing's downfield. NC State's playing a max zone coverage. Drop an eight. Very smart play, not force him down the field and let your great punter go to work and try to pin this NC State offense back in their own end zone. So McNamara, a three-time all-conference punter, gets this one away. Thayer Thomas 
They'll let it bounce over his head. It dies inside the 10 yard line. The Wolf Pack will begin at their own eight. 9.03 to go in the third. Punt coverage. Demi Sumo Karn Bay. Cuts a jagged path to the 17 yard line. He gains seven. Second down and three. Brock, are, are you for every team having a dog mascot? Whether your nickname is K9 or not, I, I just think that's good. That, that's, that's what people want. They want dogs. I'm all for it. I'm a dog lover. I own dogs. I think America loves dogs. It's fantastic. And if the cat people are offended, yeah, so be it. <laughs> Sumo Kongbe. Can he get the edge? Bottled up right before he gets to the first down marker. Taylor? Well, the, the hard hitting news right now Tuffy has called it a night. A little bit too crazy at the end of the game, so needed to go home and get some sleep. That's the life, isn't it? <laughs> it's a young pup. Rough life, pun intended. Early, early bedtime. Young pup. His handlers probably deserve an old Tuffy. Third and short here. I'd love to see Tim Beck for NC State move this pocket, get Devin Leary on the run, so he can either pick up this first down with his legs or hit an open target if he has one. Play action out of the backfield. That's said Sebro, and he's spun down after he picks up four and a Wolfpack first down. The old K pass. Pretty much every NFL team on Sundays carries this one in the short yardage playbook. Just a quick fake to the running back, offensive lineman, trying to get those defensive linemen, get their hands down and hit the fullback in the flat for a quick play. And here's the chess game. Tim Beck, offense coordinator up in the booth, looking at the Texas Tech defense, seeing what coverage they're in. And then doing a check check with me play with Devin Leary. Sumo Kongbe. Another patient run. That's what jumps out when you watch Demi KBG or KGB. You, you got the patience. He waits for his blocks to develop. He has the patience, he has the vision, and then he has the speed to hit the hole when it opens. This guy's a big time playmaker, doing a tremendous job early in the year. And like I said, it's just not the run game with Demi. He's a great all-around back. He can catch the football. He can protect and pass protection. Tremendous football player. NC State tonight more than twice as many rush yards as pass yards. Leary on the slant. He's got Thomas. A first down to the 41-yard line. Leary does a great job here of recognizing the internal blitz by the linebackers. That's a cross dog blitz, two up in the, up the A gap, right where the center is. But he has to hold the ball for the slant into the second window because the defensive end was dropping into that initial window. Great patience by Devin Leary, throwing an accurate ball for a first down. And that was his longest completion of the night, 11 yards. Both running backs in the game here, Brock Houston and Demi Sumo Kongbe. I like this package. Two of your best players. Why not get them on the field at the same time? Leary, that looked like miscommunication. And it ends up as a three-yard loss. Yeah, look, Demi looked like Demi was looking over to the sidelines right there, over to the Texas Tech side. Didn't realize he was getting the football. And those are those plays that just can't happen with a veteran offense like this, especially a third-year starter at the quarterback position. You can see there Demi just looks a little bit confused at the snap of the ball. And those are those focus plays that Dave Dorn keeps stressing to us yeah. that the NC State team must clean up. Second and long. Leary checks down. He's got Thomas taken down at the 39, or rather the 41. Tyreek Matthews made the stop. It brings up third and long. That was a 40 to go. Third quarter. Neither team has scored in the third. It was a great job by Devin working through his progressions there. He was trying to hit Devin Carter, his big outside receiver on an out route. He was well covered by Texas Tech. Devin moves through his progression, 
Hits his inside slot receiver, makes it third and manageable. NC State three of nine on third downs. Pressure coming. They set up the screen. Sumo Kongbe breaking free across the 40 of Texas Tech. Sharko picks up 19. Great play call by Tim Beck. That's one of those deals that just breaks the defense. You, you feel like you're gaining some momentum. You put NC State in third and long. You see there Devin does a tremendous job of looking away from where he's going with the football. Demi Sumo does the rest. Tremendous stiff arm showing the strength and balance that he has at the running back position. Now that was the longest play of the game for NC State. Sumo Kong Bay gets a breather. Through the first two games of the season, he has been their most dynamic offensive player as we get a timeout by Dave Doran with the play clock running down. We'll step aside. First and 10, NC State at the Red Raider 39. Fifth 10 win season in school history for the Wolfpack. T.A. McClendon, five rushing touchdowns for the pack. Jordan Houston gets the call on first down. And there's an injured Texas Tech player. It's their safety, Adrian Taylor Demerson. All conference last year. Texas Tech has had some injuries on defense today. Dimitri Moore went down. He will not return. Bryce Ramirez, a linebacker, was carted off. And now it's Taylor Demerson, who's done a nice job playing that safety position for the Red Raiders down as well. The Dodgers have already clinched a playoff berth and continue to have the best record in baseball. They'll finish up a three-game series against the Giants at Oracle Park. Sunday Night Baseball, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Our coverage begins at 6 with baseball tonight. And the Sunday night countdown. Dodgers putting up one of the best seasons in franchise history. They've got a chance to close in as one of the winningest regular season teams of all time. Currently leading the Dodgers 2-1. Good to see Demerson walk off on his own power. Great player there, honorable mention, all Big 12. Hopefully he's okay. Second down and eight for NC State after the short run for Houston. In Texas Tech territory, 3.23 to go, third quarter. Anisha feels like shot time here for NC State. He'll take one. Downfield, underthrown for Anthony Smith. They were thinking what you were thinking, that ball just a little underthrown. Anthony Smith does a tremendous job on the go route of beating the DB, stacking him, getting back inside, and leaving plenty of room for Devin Leary to throw this football. Unfortunately, Devin just underthrows a little bit. You see the double move there, kind of selling a hitch and go. Great play call by Tim Beck. All night long, NC State's either been running the football on first and second down or calling screen plays. It was time to take a shot. And they had the opportunity there. That's one Devin wants back. Eleventh play of the drive. Four-man rush. Larry hit. Gets rid of it. Completes. And down to the 30-yard line goes Christopher Tootle. It's a gain of seven. That's an interesting pass protection there by NC State, letting. Tyree Wilson, the big D lineman for Texas Tech, just go absolutely free. The best D lineman for the Red Raiders. That's somebody you might want to keep an eye on. Fourth and one. They will go for it. Or will they? Leary looking to the sideline. Watch for Thayer Thomas in the slot or Jordan Houston running the football. It's Houston up the middle. He got it.
It's a very critical drive here for the NC State offense. Starting to get that feel where if they can get a touchdown on this drive late in the third quarter, well, that really puts Donovan Smith, quarterback for Texas Tech, and that offense in a tough position late in this football game. And they bring in some of the heavier personnel, two tight ends. Houston is the running back. 12th, rather 13th play of the drive. And Houston is taken down after a gain of a yard, second down and nine. And now Houston is down. Jordan Houston waited his turn. Was the understudy the last three years behind Zonovan Knight. And Ricky Person. Thirteen carries, fifty seven yards today. That looks like he took a knee right to the helmet. I always worry when it's a hit to the head. Inadvertent. Houston's an important part of this offense as a rusher, as a receiver. And he's able to get up. Now you remember. NC State lost more than 90% of its rushing offense from last year. That was one of their biggest question marks going into this season. The combination of Houston and Sumo Kongbe. I don't think it's a surprise to the coaching staff, maybe to some people on the outside. But they've carried this offense through the first couple of games. Yeah, they really have. That's really where this offense has had its spark. Look in here, I want to see Tim DeRuta for Texas Tech throw some pressure at Devin Leary and this Wolfpack offense trying to get them off schedule. Leary has a man wide open. It's Sumo Kornbe. Touchdown, Demi Sumo Kornbe. His second of the game. There is a flag at the end. There is no foul out on the play. The flag was inadvertently mistaken for a beanbag. The ball was fumbled through the end zone. It's going to be a touchback. Wow. First down, Texas Tech. Sumo Kongbe had a clean lane to the end zone. He loses it at the end. The Wolfpack just Boy. can't. They just can't stop hurting themselves, unfortunately. Great play call there. You do the play yeah, action and, fake and to Demi. Ball looks to be out before he got across. Looked to be that he got across. Just a push from the backside. It's Dadrian Taylor Demerson. And the fireworks and everything. And, and those are two big miscues now. For Demi Sumo Kongbe. Remember, there was uh, the one play where he was in the backfield and it was a zone read and he wasn't paying attention. It ends up for negative yards. And uh, that's one, Brock. Th that's inexcusable. He's got to tuck that and protect it. There is no excuse for that. As a ball carrier, you know that you need to secure that football with your life until you cross that white line. Unfortunately, Demi 
He didn't finish through that white line, and he let up a little bit before the goal line there. So a nine minute and three second drive, 14 plays, 90 yards, results in a fumble, and Texas Tech has it back. And Donovan Smith able to complete on first down to Trey Cleveland, the 6'4 redshirt junior from Arlington, and that's a first down. Now the Red Raiders still have the door ajar in this ball game with 105 to go here in the third quarter. Less than a minute to go here in the third quarter. There's a lot of football to be played. Anything can still happen tonight. Corner blitz! Aiden White ate him up. Smith never saw it coming, a loss of eight. Thompson, the running back there in pass protection. You can tell by his reaction post play. You're going to see here the corner at the bottom of your screen. Blitzing from the, the boundary. That's the running back Thompson's responsibility to pick up. He has undisciplined eyes and he releases out into his route rather than handling his protection first. Four sacks now for the pack. Smith looking, throws toward the sideline. It's caught well shy of the marker. Nehemiah Martinez coming off the career game against Houston. Texas Tech trying to go quickly, but time just ran out. I don't think this play is going to count. So there Roderick was Thompson. We had zeros on the clock. There was no time left on the clock when that ball was snapped. That's the end of the third quarter. They're going to let that play count. There was no time on the clock. All right, thank you, Kevin. And I'm looking to bounce back. Miami looking to say they're back yet again. Third down and eight after essentially a do-over. Texas Tech will empty it out, now working right to left. Donovan Smith, 16 out of 23. Throws near sideline, lunging try, incomplete. Bradley trying to plead his case. The line judge right there says it's incomplete, so now fourth down. Donovan Smith and I on the exact same page. He catches man-to-man -man defense here. I was thinking the exact same thing. Feed the big man outside, Jerome Bradley, 6'5", 215. Definitely an incomplete pass. Brock, they're lining up like they're going for it here on fourth and eight for their own 35. Smith steps up, tracked from behind, and stopped. Peyton Wilson finished him off, and NC State takes over inside the Red Raider 40. I'm a little surprised by that call. I know Texas Tech feels like they need to go get touchdowns in this fourth quarter, but there's still a lot of game to play, and NC State has not been able to sustain drives offensively and move the ball the length of the field. I'm punting it and saying, hey, Devin Leary, can you and your offense drive 80 yards to score on us? I'm not giving them a short field. Almost a horse collar there. Savion Jackson slowed Smith up, and then Peyton Wilson. Wilson, one of a number of players who got hurt last year, returned this year for an extra season. That's why the preseason high for that NC State. Was at such a loud decibel. Preseason number 13, 10 returning starters on defense, and the ACC preseason player of the year at quarterback. Jordan Houston, who got hurt in the third quarter, is out for the game, so Demi Sumo Karngbe is the running back. Double Screen pass, pass. Double, pass. Be a double pass. Thomas lofts it downfield. It's caught. Sumo Karngbe holds on. Touchdown, and that's Thayer Thomas again. threw a touchdown pass earlier that was called back. This one counts, and he can do that. Four career touchdown passes now for Thayer Thomas. Thayer Thomas does it all for this Wolfpack offense. 
think, think of a Julian Edelman type player. We've seen Julian throw touchdowns. We've seen Danny Amendola back in the day do it. They can throw touchdowns. They can they can take the handoff. They can run great routes. That is Thayer Thomas, all world wide receiver. But Thayer Thomas with a touchdown pass to Demi Sumo Karnbe. And NC State has extended to 27-20 early in the fourth. Yeah, I love the creativity by Tim Beck, really opening up the playbook. NC State's offense catches Texas Tech in man-to-man -man defense, and you're going to see Demi sneaking out of the backfield. You're going to have a little eye violation by linebacker number six, Kosi Eldridge. Needs to keep his eyes on Demi the entire time. He follows the pass rather than keeping his eyes where he needed to, and that's how he got beat downfield. Let's check it again with Kevin. All right, Anish, Bobby Petrino back in Fayetteville with Missouri State leading 27-17. Coach, when K.J. Jefferson finds Raheem Sanders. Yeah, a little shovel pass up the middle, and the athletes at Arkansas right here have just exerted their presence. And made it a field goal game. Missouri State punts. They punt it to Bryce Stevens, and he finds a seam. <laughs> Two quick scores, and all of a sudden, the uh, the upset has turned into an uh-oh. 82 yards. Arkansas on top, Anish. Donovan Smith throws incomplete, and I'd love to see the sign game in Fayetteville tonight. Tony Gibson does not care that his team is up by 20 points right now. He is still bringing pressure. He's bringing the heat right there. He blitzes two more guys off of the edge, and he is just not making Donovan Smith's job easy tonight. Smith 16 out of 25, and for NC State, they've accomplished goal number one. They have kept him for the most part in the pocket, and he hasn't been a threat with his legs. On the drag route, completes. Fungi fights his way to the 35, and he's got enough for a first down. Good to see Lowe getting involved with the game. I know he's battling through an injury right now. Good to see him get that catch over the middle, get vertical, get some extra yards. Junior out of Midland, Texas. Smith steps up. Throws on the run too high. Wanted Fungi again. I know the Red Raiders need points, and they need points quickly right now. But, but Donovan, don't get away from what you were doing earlier. All the receivers were covered downfield. Who was wide open? The running back in the flat. Work through your progressions. Don't be afraid to check it down to the back. You can still get good chunk yards with your running back. Taj Brooks in the backfield with Smith. Edge pressure. Incomplete. A lot of contact downfield. No flag. Bradley was the intended receiver. Jakeen Harris, the safety and coverage. And by that time, you saw Derek Pitts coming on the corner blitz, which worked earlier with Aiden White. Yeah, like I said, Tony Gibson's not letting up. He's going to continue to bring pressure. I like Donovan Smith's decision there. He just needs to give his receiver a chance to make a play on the ball. Davin Van nearly jumped. It's third down. Harris now cheats up slightly. Go back off. On the ground, Smith on the zone read. Stops. And tripped up by Harris. Finished off by three other Wolfpack teammates. And it's fourth down. He went for it last time. Got to assume they're going to stay on the field and go for it again. Got to go for it. It's not even a question. You're down 20, 13 minutes to go in the game. It's time to find a way to score some points. Here's the blitz. Smith stands in. Completes across midfield. That's J.J. Sparkman picking up 16. And it's a first down. Great job by the Texas Tech offensive line picking up that internal pressure you see and Donovan Smith just throwing an accurate ball one on one outside. Great job by that Red Raider offense. Smith to his tight end, tight end Tharp. And he falls forward. Picks up 11, a first down. 
Red Raiders still have plenty of time left. 12 and a half to go here in the fourth. Great job taking what the defense gives you. They're playing a soft zone. Take those underneath throws all day. This time a check down. And it's Brooks torpedoes ahead for a gain of eight. The best way to get into a rhythm as a quarterback, especially a young one, is just trust your eyes. You see that NC State defense sinking into soft zone. Take the running back until NC State takes it away from you. Pump and a strike over the middle. It's Martinez. 14 more. Ball on the 11-yard line. That was a little reminiscent of last week. Martinez took a little crossing route just like that, and he took it the distance for about 70 yards. NC State having trouble getting lined up. Smith will roll to his right. He's got room to run. Turns the corner and gets out of bounds, and that's going to be a late hit. Tanner Ingle came in at the end of the play. Boy, that was pretty close. But if you're Tanner Ingle, don't make it close for the ref. Don't put it in his hands to decide if it's a 15-yard penalty. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Defense number 10. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Ingle's a terrific safety. A couple of years ago, he had some issues with targeting, was ejected three times. I absolutely love Tanner Ingle's game. He's played so hard today. He's made big impact plays all over the field, but that's one. Just be smart and don't put it in the official's hands to possibly call that flag on you. They give to Brooks. Stonewalled. Still fights forward before Fagan made the play. That would have been a TFL. It ends up being no gain. Second down and goal. Let's get that 6-9 tight end involved down here in the red zone. Mason Tharp. Big time advantage for you. With him running routes at six foot nine. Two tight ends to the right. Price now the motion man. Smith fakes it to Price. He'll march in for six. That really felt like an offensive rhythm. And I don't think we've said that about Texas Tech all night. No, we really haven't. But what was different about that drive? Donovan Smith was accurate passing the football and he was patient and just took what the defense give him. How did he march down the field? Yes, he hit a couple of plays down, down the field a little bit, but he was taking the running back in the flat. He was taking the tight end in the flat. If NC State's going to play a soft zone defense, you've got to be willing to take the check down. Credit Donovan Smith. Great drive by the Red Raiders. That's a great point. Texas Tech could walk away with a loss tonight, but they might have just seen some growth a little bit. They're going to beat UConn next week and that sets up a matchup with Clemson at Death Valley. I'll finish that thought after the studio update from Kevin Connors. All right, Anish Cameron rising at the Utah Utes looking to avenge a stunning loss to San Diego State last season. The number 14 Utes and Aztecs will kick things off on ESPN News in a matter of moments. You'll see it here on ESPN2 after we go final in Raleigh. Anish. Thanks, Kevin. To finish the point, if NC State's 4-0 going into Clemson, the Tigers look vulnerable. Are you looking at a real chance to seize control of the Atlantic and set yourself up to play in the ACC championship? You're exactly right, but we have a 13-point ball game. A lot of time to play here. This is a very critical drive for the NC State offense. A gain of six for Sumo Kongbe. Remember, NC State beat Clemson and Raleigh last year. Devin Carter had the game-winning touchdown catch. Look at the win probabilities for the next five games. I, I got to be honest, I'm a little surprised that Syracuse is 36%. I know the Orange are 3 0, but Purdue gift wrapped that one earlier. Yeah, that was an exciting game up at the dome today. Tremendous finish. Orange pulling it out late. A loss of a yard. It brings up third down. And again, still work to do here tonight. Texas Tech not out of it. They get a stop here. A chance to make it a one-score game. 
The Red Raiders can strike quickly. There's an injured player for Texas Tech. It's Marquise Waters. We'll step aside. Texas Tech looking for a stop to get the ball back. Down two scores. And we get a penalty. False start. Offense number 54. Five yard penalty. Third down. The right guard, Dylan McMahon, so third and five. Now becomes third and ten, and this is another one of those tipping points in the game. Another pre-snap penalty hurting the Wolfpack offense. We saw this earlier in the game. We've seen it last week. We saw it week one. I'll tell you what, as a play caller, your play sheet looks a lot different from third and five to third and ten. The amount of choices you have really drop. Bayard Thomas not out there on third down. Three-man pressure. Leary throws. And that's incomplete for Daryl Jones. Here comes the punt team. Great coverage by the former NC State Wolfpack corner Malik Dunlap. Just creating a very tight window for Devin to throw into. He's had great coverage all night. McDonough to punt from the 10. Hokut waits at the 26. Looks like Tex coming after this punt. They want to block it. McDonough gets it off. Hokut lets this one bounce. It takes a Texas Tech bounce. And it's down at the 40 yard line. So the Red Raiders. With 9.01 to go. Indiana Tech. This Texas Tech offense can score quickly. Smith has time. Incomplete through it behind Cleveland, who is open. Down to Taylor. I've been down here on the Texas Tech sideline. There is no panic. There's a lot of talk. Hey, nine minutes left. We can score twice, but they feel rejuvenated after that last stop on defense. Yeah, that was the feeling last week when they won against Houston. The, the motto on this team is what's next? They don't care what happened in the past. They're only looking forward. As long as there's time on the clock, they're willing to play. Smith backpedals. He's got to get rid of it. And we've seen NC State really deploy that spy well, sometimes too. Isaiah Moore waited, 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 and then attacked. Yes, they're doing a great job of keeping Donovan Smith in the pocket. You can tell he's trying to get outside and make a play with his legs, and that's where he's most comfortable. But if he's going to beat NC State tonight, he needs to do it from the pocket, and he needs to make some throws down the field. Third and ten. Let's see if the pack dial up pressure. Texas Tech, 2 of 11 on third downs. Safety blitz. It's picked up. Smith fires toward the sideline. Incomplete. Fagan in coverage on Miles Price. And it brings up fourth down. They've got for it twice on fourth down here in the fourth quarter in minus territory. And YOLO. Why would we change things now? If, if you get four downs in a possession, might as well use them all. That's the Texas Tech mentality. On their last touchdown drive, they converted on fourth down from minus territory. The blitz. Smith stands in. It's intercepted. Jakeen Harris picks it off. This game is playing out exactly how Tony Gibson and his defense wanted it to. They wanted to bring pressure. Once again, you get another corner blitz from the boundary with Tanner Engel, and it forces the young quarterback into making a poor decision for his second interception of the night. Yeah, we may have on sportsman like here on Harris after the play.
after the play was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number six, NC State. 15-yard penalty. First down. That's, that's not going to cut it. Can't do that anytime. You start verbalizing and talking a little trash with the opposing sideline. The officials are going to get you for 15 every single time. That's that's something we don't want to see in this game. Definitely an easy unsportsmanlike conduct. So it backs up the ball to the 35. And that's important. You had it at midfield before. And again, now Texas Tech, even if they get a stop, have a chance to get the ball back. They're not going to get it here. Sumo Kongbe out to the 42 yard line. A gain of seven, 11 carries, 50 yards for Demi Sumo Kongbe. Jordan Houston, who has split carries almost evenly with Agent Zero so far, is out for the game. He took a hit to the helmet in the third quarter. Listen, the Red Raiders defense definitely needs to find a way to get the ball back for their offense. They're going to bring pressure on this series like they did last play. But when you bring pressure, you have to stay disciplined and stay in your gap so that you don't get gashed like you just did. On the ground again. And Sumo Kornbe makes his way to about the 44. He's going to be a yard shy. It's third and one. If you're NC State, you want to use this entire play clock. There's 28 seconds on it right now. You're going to want to run this thing all the way down and snap the ball somewhere under four seconds. It's time to start thinking about running that game clock out as much you can. And this Red Raider defense is experienced. Ten seniors or graduate students. Leary quarterback sneak. He got it. First down. is one of those deals if you're Texas Tech you need to get NC State behind the sticks I'd love to see Tim DeRuiter bring some pressure here get NC State into a second and long and burn one of those three timeouts that you have to save as much time on that clock for your offense as possible NC State content to keep it on the ground and Sumo Karn Bay gets two more second down and eight Yeah, you're not going to see much urgency here by NC State. Trying to milk this clock down as much as they can. Two possession game, really in control of things right now. Like I said, if you're Texas Tech, you got to find a way to get NC State off schedule, and you need to start thinking about burning some of those timeouts to save that game clock. Sumo Karnbe again. No gain. Third down. I don't know why Texas Tech isn't taking a timeout right here. The clock is not their friend. Down 13. Two possession game late in the fourth. You have to get a stop here. Yep. And, and you want as much time on that clock for your offense. Given how quickly Texas Tech can strike if they get the ball back. If you're NC State, is this another run player? Do you throw it? I'm going to move the pocket and make it a high percentage throw. And if it's not there, Devin, just run the ball to keep the clock moving. Now there it is. Sumo Kongbe looking for a seam. Spins away from trouble and picks up the first down. He's been a threat and a weapon in the receiving game today. Four catches, 93 yards, and a touchdown. What a play by Demi. Had a few slip-ups throughout the game, but now in the fourth quarter, when it truly matters, he takes this swing screen. Great spin move there. Makes one miss and picks up a huge first down for his Wolfpack team. 
Demarcus Jones comes in to spell Sumo Kongbe. Jones, a former walk on. Career high seven carries, 39 yards last week. And the win against Charleston Southern. And he is driven back for a loss on first down. Second down and 12. I'll tell you what. The odds are slim for Texas Tech right now. But long term, is the future bright in Lubbock. Joey McGuire has brought a different energy to this program. His ability to recruit. They're already making headway in terms of recruiting like they've never recruited before at Texas Tech. He's an old high school football coach in the state of Texas. Well respected. That matters when you recruit that state. It certainly does. I think this Red Raider team is a unit that you are going to hear about throughout the season and especially in the future. What Joey McGuire is doing and the culture he's creating there in Lubbock is very special. He says to his players, he goes, listen, if you come play for me, you're stuck with me for life. And that's because he loves his players. He loves his program. He instills trust by how he goes about things every single day. He says to his players, he goes, listen, I want the best part of your day to be when you see me. And that's a special guy. Yeah, last night they had a Friday movie night. It's a tradition that they have no phones allowed when the team is together. Be present. Put your phones away. Put your device away. Spend quality time with each other. It's a big third down. Got him with the hard count. Yep. Vidal Scott jumped. Oh, they're starting to point to the NC State offense. Want to flip this? There is no foul prior to the snap. NC State calls a timeout. Media timeout. Will step aside. 2.51 to go in regulation. Osweiler, Taylor McGregor. Third down, eight to go. For NC State from the Red Raider 40 yard line. Demarcus Jones is in the backfield. Now, Brock, from here, you're looking at two plays to potentially seal the game? Yeah, you are. I don't think you put this ball in harm's way. I'm calling back to back runs here. And instead, a screen pass, and that goes for negative yardage. And, the, and that, that screen that they were trying to set up is essentially an outside run. Safe, you know, safe play call. Devin's not going to put the ball in harm's way. But now you got to think about it. do you punt it and pin Texas Tech back or do you try to pick this up and just seal it if I'm here I'm punting this ball and, and I'm, I'm putting Texas Tech you know backs way up and, and trying to make them drive yeah, 90 they, plus yards they took a long time to decide Leary finally comes off the field McDonough on the field after that catch by Julian Gray for a loss so fourth down 12 to go. Texas Tech down two scores. They're going to get the ball back with less than two minutes, but all three timeouts. Delay a game, kicking team, five yard penalty, still fourth down. We remind you this season, All State will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you. Allstate. That was a delay a game that NC State took on purpose. Yep. Just trying to give their punter a little bit more room to work with so he doesn't have just that little pooch punt. Hocut calls for the fair catch and makes this one at the 15. 153 to go. Texas Tech down 27 to 14. The Red Raiders end the non-conference portion of their schedule after tonight. Big 12 play begins next week uh, against Texas. Rick Flair will be there. Yeah, Donovan Smith got it going last drive. He really found some quick completions. He was just taking what the NC State defense was giving him in front of that soft zone they were playing. He hit some shallow crossing routes, hit the tailback out of the backfield and then finished the drive off with his legs and got his team into the end zone. And there's a new quarterback. It's Baron Morton in the game. 
And he picks up about seven. Morton, a redshirt freshman, the highest rated quarterback signee in school history. Four star recruit, ESPN 300 prospect. Flips this one to the near sideline, caught by Martinez. And I go back to what Joey McGuire told us yesterday. The quarterback derby, the three man race between Morton, Smith, and Tyler Shuck in the offseason. Joey McGuire said, hey, that was as close as I've been a part of. It was an all-out brawl. All three played well. Shuck got hurt. Smith has started today. And now Morton comes in to clean up, and he's got a big lane and dives across midfield to the 45 in Wolfpack territory. Yeah, Joey McGuire said he's very confident in all three quarterbacks. He said they all competed very well during training camp. You know, but I got to admit, I, I, I'm a little confused with what's going on. Uh, Joey's saving all three of his timeouts. He put in his backup quarterback. He was only down two possessions, and it seemed like almost waved the white flag and was okay with NC State running down the clock. Didn't burn any of the timeouts, and now he's throwing in a backup quarterback when the game is still within reach. I'm puzzled. I'm sure we'll get clarification on that after the game. Second down and 10. Throw, and that one bounces in front of the intended target. And there's a flag down. Holding. Offense number 75. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Well, the one thing I can tell you is Tony Gibson, he's not done playing on the NC State side of the ball. He's still bringing max pressures. He's going to test this young quarterback, Morton. He's going to see where the freshman's at mentally to see if he can handle these pressures and get the ball out. If we learned anything from uh, football in the state of North Carolina earlier this year is Devin Boykin is down all the way back at the 15-yard line. If you watched that App State North Carolina game week one, that looked about over at this point. It wasn't over. Yes, I've seen stranger things happen. Like I said, this is a two possession game. You have three timeouts in your back pocket. It's time to start driving the ball down the field. You got to take a little bit of risk with that ball. You know, there's no other way that you're going to get an explosive gain, but you get a quick touchdown, you get an onside kick, anything can happen. I'm, I'm very confused with Joey McGuire's clock management with this second half of the fourth quarter and the decision to bring in a backup quarterback. And Baron Morton coming in on this drive after Donovan Smith started. Smith came on in relief of Tyler Shuck in week one who injured his shoulder. While they attend to Boykin, we will check in with Kevin. Yeah, Anish, we want to let you know right now, we got Washington working on finishing off the upset of Michigan State. That's over on ABC. UTSA upset-minded against Texas on the Longhorn Network. That's now a four-point game. And Texas A&M upset a week ago by Appalachian State. Trying to bounce back against Miami on ESPN. And in the on-deck circle, San Diego State and Utah on ESPN News. Texas visits Lubbock next week. We've seen a couple of hangover games today, right? Texas, the emotional game, even though they lose to Alabama. Now you got to get up for UTSA. They have their hands full. Appalachian State had the great win. We were there in College Station when they beat AM. And yeah, you go back up to Boone. Everybody tells you you're a hero. Game day is there. And you need a Hail Mary to beat Troy. App State <laughs> was the game that I knew early this week. They were going to be in a dogfight. Such an emotional win last week for them in College Station. They got back to Boone very late. They had plane issues. I knew that was going to be a battle for them today. Second and 20. Morton threw it behind his receiver, and it's picked off. Aiden White. That's the fourth takeaway by NC State. Three interceptions. And the Wolfpack just kneel it down a few times and we'll see if Texas Tech wants to call time. What a performance by the Wolfpack defense tonight. They, they didn't let this Tech offense get started one time. They just suffocated them really from the first possession of the game with their blitz pressures, their disguised looks in the secondary showing one look pre-snap at the post-snap rotating to something different. Really credit Tony Gibson's defense. These guys flew around. They played hard. 
they created sacks and turnovers and that's how you win big football games. Aiden White had the pick six early and he's the closer with the interception to seal the win. So NC State will go to 3 0. I feel comfortable saying they'll beat UConn next week to go to 4 0. Huskies right now probably in the argument for the worst team in college football and then uh, that sets up a date at Clemson early October. You're exactly right. It is definitely now time to start talking about this Wolfpack Clemson matchup. That's two weeks away. Wolfpack getting the win tonight. You're right. UConn next week. It's setting up for something special. And Texas Tech uses a timeout. And that will determine the balance of power in the ACC. Now Clemson has been the team even last year. Down season. They didn't play in the ACC championship. Still won 10 games. The Tigers have a clear quarterback issue. But for NC State, they, they've got to be better on offense. What we saw week one against ECU, they did not score a single point in the second half. Only had two offensive touchdowns. They almost had to throw out last week. That was Charleston Southern. Today, they took advantage early of some short fields, some Texas Tech miscues, had a pick six. Now the offense at 264 yards. Devin Leary, 15 out of 23, 121 yards. They need more from this offense if they are going to be the team we thought they are going to be when the season started. Here's what we know about NC State. We know they have a very talented defense that's going to fly around. They're going to create turnovers. They have a ball hawk secondary. So you know the defense is sound, okay? You know offensively for the Wolfpack, you have a great run game. You have a great screen game. What you need to improve upon before you start getting into league play is your drop back pass game with Devin Leary and his wideouts. Yeah, there's another Devin that's a part of that as Texas Tech calls a timeout. That's Devin Carter. Only four catches in the first two games, none tonight. He was the hero of the Clemson upset last year. He's somebody that you look at and say, hey, there's much more in this tank than we've seen so far. Certainly. When you look at Devin Carter, I was looking at him pregame down on the field and he reminds me of like a Des Bryant right the guy is big he's strong he's physical you can tell he plays with a lot of juice and energy he was really fired up pregame Tim Beck has to find a way to get him involved in this offense because he's a big time playmaking threat that needs to be utilized Anish I, I, I just got to say it right now I am so confused <laughs> with what Joey McGuire is doing with his timeouts I think it's safe to say the game is done now but seven minutes ago yeah. there was still life for the Red Raiders and he just let NC State run the clock out I'm, I'm very confused with what he's doing and now he'll use his third timeout 43 seconds to go and then he got Oklahoma State this Red Raiders team has come a long ways since Joey's come to town but they still obviously have, have a little ways to go. We remind you, San Diego State, Utah is next here on ESPN2. McDonough will punt it away. And this one bounces and rolls out of bounds. You know, you start looking at the Big 12. Some of the recent hires, uh, Lance Leipold at Kansas, the Jayhawks, they're three and zero. Duke, Kansas, in football, is a three and zero versus three and zero matchup next week. I was just going to say, we're not just talking about hoops with these schools. No. <laughs> Game day, come to Lawrence. They're building some football programs right now, which is fun to see. It's it's always exciting to see which teams. You know, no one really talked about in the preseason and what teams are going to get a hot start and get us all talking about them. Fungi, Fungi, across the 30. B button's out of trouble. Out to the 39-yard line. Momentarily stops the clock. 23 seconds to go. And if you're still hanging on, there's a reason. 
Morton completes. That's Brady Boyd. First catch of the season, Minnesota transfer. Morton toward the sideline, and there's Fungi again. Two seconds to go, so this will be the final play. A little too late for the Red Raiders. That's an incomplete pass. We give credit where credit's due. NC State, defensively. <laughs> uh, timeout. Calls a timeout. NC State, 30-second timeout. It's been theater of uh, the absurd a little bit tonight, huh? Anish, I'm excited to watch some <laughs> post-game press conferences. I'm, I, I need some answers. I'm, I'm pretty confused sitting up here watching this play out right now. I tell you what, though, you know, McGuire and Dorn, these guys are friends. When Dorn was an assistant at Kansas, McGuire was coaching high school football at Cedar Hill, and Dorn signed McGuire's first Division I player, Marcus Herford, who was part of the winningest class in the history of Kansas football. And Tim Beck was telling us he had a 9-0 team that lost to Joey McGuire's 5-4 Cedar Hill team. Really the first marquee victory for McGuire at Cedar Hill. And uh, those two were going back and forth all week over text. And what Tim said, he goes, hey, I owe Joey one. Yeah. You know, he, he really wanted to get him tonight. Obviously, that was just fun banter between two friends. Uh, but you know it means a lot to these guys. NC State came out here tonight, played really hard. Defensively, Tony Gibson had his unit rolling on all cylinders, creating turnovers and sacks. Credit the Final sense. play of the game. Here's Xavier White. And he's tackled at the 14-yard line. A few folks out there who were watching till the end can exhale. That does it. NC State is 3-0. They've got UConn next week. And they will, in all likelihood, head to Death Valley to play Clemson the first weekend of October as an undefeated team. Texas Tech falls to two and one. They get Texas at home next weekend. For Brock Osweiler and Taylor.